Hello, well, Bryce. Hey, hello, and welcome to the Comic Conspiracy episode. Opening a window. 280. Two, two, uh, yeah, 283. Hey, hi, hi. 283. What's happened? You'd think we've recorded these before. Uh, my name is Ryan Higgins. Who's here with me this week? Brock Sager. The unbelievable Gwenpool. <laughs> or Bryce. Toby. Very similar. And Charlie. And you really want us to call you Gwenpool this entire episode? Bryce Pool. <laughs> Uh, I'll take Bryce Pool. I'll take Gwen Pool. I will take um, very little else. Or Vision. I'll take <laughs> Vision. Although, man, I'm not that dark. Oof. Visual. No, I couldn't, I couldn't do that one. I was trying to think Charlie and Cable. Charlie Bolt. Nah, it doesn't work either. All right, hey, what's going on, guys? We got a lot. We actually have stuff to say about Cable late in this episode. Oh, for all you Cable fans. Uh, Who put this in? What? Who put what in? This wood. Milton. Yeah, the whole door's a little off. No, Toby. Have to just press this Toby, in. this is great radio. <laughs> I'm a little disappointed in this. Wow. Why don't you talk about it? Our great friend Milton took some time out of his day to slide in a little uh, a little siding on our door here. And Milton's oh, uh, and Toby's very disappointed with his work. I am, because he usually does far better work. Milton, shoddy work, my friend. <laughs> he does way better work usually. Anyway. Oh, well, disappointed. What are you do? Anyway. That's okay. He... I'm pretty sure you did better work than I would have. So. Uh, well, now this, we need some siding, some top, Ryan. Then you're done, finally. This conversation is worse than the unbeatable scroll. <laughs> hey, uh, you mean uh, it's worse than um, it's worse than um, a DC combo? Yeah, yeah, worse than Gwynpool. Oh, so uh, that's well. We're gonna start this episode sad, and then we're gonna get a little happy, and then we're gonna end pretty depressing. So let's just let's let's go through all the emotions. Let's go through all the emotions. There's only really I two think there. there's yeah. Hmm? No, there's a spectrum. He hasn't gone through it. We're going to start very sad. We'll talk about some DC books. We'll get a little happier, but not much. Then we'll talk about Marvel. We'll get really happy or really depressed. And then we'll... Uh, so it's a roller coaster, you guys. Don't be so dismissive. Don't be so binary. Jesus. Uh, well, we do have to talk uh, briefly about uh, Steve Dillon, yeah. artist, one of my favorite comic artists of all time. Worked on uh, Hellblazer, Preacher, Punisher, all with Garth Ennis. Uh, co-creator of Deadline. It's a uh, the British anthology magazines that um, uh, a lot of uh, some notable names came from. Uh, Disraeli, uh, what's his face from? Um, oh, fucking work, work at the uh, did work at the Gorillas. I'm like I'm trying to blank on the guy's name now. It's killing me. What's the guy's name? I don't have his front of me here. I don't have the list in front of me. Sorry. Uh, anyway, You're passed away. Fine. At the age of, I believe, uh, 54, 54. Yeah. Uh, this past weekend on Saturday, uh, you know, I mean, if, <clears throat> you've heard us talk about Preacher a thousand times during this podcast, and if you're watching the show, you should read the comics instead. Uh, 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 so sad. Such yeah. a great artist. He had just started to come back, and he was doing more work. He was working for Marvel. He was doing Punisher again yeah. with uh, yeah. Becky. Clooney. Yeah, Becky Cloonan. Yeah, he was doing the more recent Punisher book. And he, you know, he I love his Punisher. His Punisher is just mm-hmm. so... So incredible. And what I love about Steve Dillon's art the most is that it's just, it's almost in spite of everything from the 90s and 2000s that comic <laughs> artists taught us, right? It's not over hyper kinetic or all stylized like Jim Lee and Wildstorm stuff. It's not all weird and indie looking like a lot of the small press books. It's like this <clears throat> super clean, kind of little dirty, very, I mean, I. I could see a lot of uh, influence. Uh, him and Frank Quietly have a, I don't want to say similar Ugh. style, but there is similar <laughs> uh, uh, features okay. in what their artwork. What drawing do you look like again, Ryan Higgins? What's that? What drawing do you look like again? I don't look like a specific drawing, but <laughs> multiple people have said, you look. I look like a Frank Quietly drawing, so I found that interesting. <laughs> it's, just, it's just not a very traditional comic style, especially in like American comic art stuff, and I... He's one of my absolute favorite artists. I'm so devastated that he that he passed away. So. Wasn't it, is it his appendix? I don't know. I don't know what he, I don't know what it was. I don't think they've. I don't think they've said he's. I think he's been sick for a while. Um, I I don't want to say he was an alcoholic, but he definitely had a major drinking problem for a big portion of his life, and um, that might have led to it. But I'm not. I'm not sure what actually caused it. As as Bryce takes another sweep <laughs> from his beer. <laughs> no, I would not pretend that he was anywhere near my top artist but i do acknowledge that he was very good and i did really like him um you know he uh i would uh, liken him oh, yeah. more to I, yeah brock said it was a ruptured appendix oof that's no fun it's yeah. a good little explosion inside uh 
inside your belly. Sort of like episode five of Luke Cage. Yeah. Or whichever one the, the 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 sad part is is like a lot of his art was pretty detailed <laughs> when it came to gore. <laughs> oh yeah. yeah. Oh god yeah. He was very I mean extremely graphic artist when he wants to be, but yeah. it's it uh, it's never like disgusting. It's very uh, cartoony is not the word I want to use, but it's a very his, his his art had his art is very very serious, but at times it seems like it's a, it's it's not it's more like you're like you said it's not cartoony in like a kid's cartoon yeah but it's more like cartoony like blood splatter in a horror movie it can be there's a i i wish i could describe what i think of his art because it's it's so unique in in especially in western comics and and the the materials he worked on he's one of those few artists where there are times where he like he did just random fill-in books, and I'm like, this does not fit his art style because it's just not his type of story. Mm-hmm. But working with Garth Ennis, especially on books like Hellblazer, uh, Preacher, those books, and, and especially Punisher, they fit his art so yeah. – it was like the books were made for him, mm-hmm. uh, for what his art style looks like. And yeah, I just – Yeah. The, everything that always kind of stood out to me about his art is just how expressive the faces could be mm-hmm. in those books. Oh, and yeah, like, yeah. You, you talk about sort of the look of fear that criminals are supposed to get in a Batman book or something, and you know, the look on the faces of criminals in the Punisher book I'm was... A little bit like Kevin Maguire. And it's, again, not like their art's the exact same, but Kevin Maguire doesn't draw like a lot of American comic artists does, especially his Marbana stuff. It's it, there's there's a there's a a roundness to his art. That's a weird thing to say, but I it's not a bunch of straight lines, not a bunch of sharp angles. It's a very s- soft style that usually what is was about Maguire on again. Uh, you know, all the Justice League International stuff and oh yeah yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. he's done uh, he did some I mean he still works occasionally in random books, but uh, yeah. Such a good artist. Well, when I heard the news, I felt like a complete dick, <coughs> and I was really saddened. Well, I know you're not. You don't really like his art. Yeah, so. but but you know, he's a cornerstone of the industry, and me yeah. not being a fan, and when someone like that passes, that makes me feel really extremely bad because I'm like, you know, I don't mean it like that because I like him as a you know creator, and sure, you know he sure. did some fantastic runs with you know. Uh, with with Ennis and other people, but you know, so I've I felt bad, man. I mean, ah, if it's I was, not, I mean, I was bummed out though. I mean, it, either way, I mean, even if you have a creator of that caliber passing, it's like, yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. It's, it's, I you mean, know, we already don't have enough creators in this industry as is. Yeah, I, there's a difference between liking something and respecting something. Yeah, yeah, I'm not the biggest Michael Turner fan, but I wasn't like, haha, he died. It's like, no, yeah. that's fucking devastating. Yeah, like it yeah. really sucked when he yeah. passed away. Well, it might not have been my style, but yeah. I, I, but well, I. Respect the but hell out of the his, guy. His yeah. art really worked for his book. It's like yeah. I wasn't a Frank Miller, well, new Frank Miller fan until Red the Sun Cities. I'm like that shit totally fits his yeah, new exactly. art. Yeah, exactly. Right? So it's it's yeah, yeah. And before I was like flipping through the Sun Cities, I'm like, what is this? You know, it's not till I read it, I'm like, holy, this this works. Yeah. So it's a very very similar thing with that. With Garth Ennis, I think Dylan's art took the absurd comedy and extreme violence that Ennis likes so much. And his art fits that because he can do both. Yeah. yeah and so yeah. when, like, kind of what Mark said, when bad things are happening, it's still kind of funny almost. Mm-hmm. Um, if when when Ellis or when he left, sorry, and, and uh, Ennis kept going through the Marvel Max stuff with other creators. I mean, the book was still awesome, but it was very different. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it was a very it was a, just a dark style that that well, we th- had a very I think, different feel. I think, I think, that's it. I think that you hit it on the nail. Was his his art was it brought a little fun to to things that, but it was still serious. Well, I mean, the Did picture you say it was dry humor art. Mm, maybe a, no, well, I would say dry humor. Okay. I mean, the picture everyone knows. Everyone on the internet has seen the picture of Punisher punching a bear, polar bear in the face. This is like Steve Dillon's <laughs> magnum opus piece from I think the first issue of the of the the Punisher run with with Garth Ennis and. While there are obviously comic fans of his and readers of Preacher, I mean, obviously he has better art, but that one image became basically like this huge internet meme when it came out. And I mean, it's been, you know, that was 10, 12 years ago or whatever, and it's still a very popular image that I see used all the time online. And so it's that sort of ridiculousness that he could do, but still make it look good and still work. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I think it's just hard because it was so sudden, like... 
I mean, yeah. I, I woke up on Saturday and I was outside. I went outside to have a cigarette and and like I looked down on, on my Facebook. I'm like, what? Wait, Steve Dillon died? What yeah. the f- like? Yeah, you know, I, yeah. he had apparently been sick, but I don't. I don't, you know, I don't feel like this was public knowledge or stuff anyone knew about because, you know. Yeah, a lot of um, people in the spotlight, I'm amazed at how well they can keep a secret like that until yeah. they're over it. Like, yeah. I'm constantly seeing a news report or something like, so-and-so got over cancer. I'm like, I didn't even know. Didn't yeah. Even, didn't no, even. If Frank Miller died tomorrow, I'd be like, yep, saw that coming. I mean, I don't know if you've seen pictures of him, he looks yeah, he looks emaciated. like, I mean, it's, I'm not, I'm not, it's not funny. I'm saying it's like really sad. Like he's clearly going through some stuff and you can look at him and be like, wow, like, dude, you, like, I don't know what's happened to you, but you've, you've obviously had a rough couple of years. But Steve Dillon, I mean, I, I'd seen pictures of him. I, 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 I think it was on Bleeding Cool. They said he had lost a bunch of weight and stuff. And I'm like, I, you know, you, I mean, He's not like a face. He's not always in front of stuff, so you don't hear anything about it. And then the guy just passes away. So yeah, ugh, brutal, 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 brutal. All right, let, let's 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 talk some happy stuff. Let's talk some happy stuff. And I know Bryce, Charlie, Toby. This stuff's going to make you very, very happy. No, very happy. What you should about, also turn your mic on me? too. The uh, no, you, you the know. clone conspiracy is actually good. No, no, no. Uh, so we know Death of X number two is actually good. We know no. we know the snore fest that is Death of X <laughs> one and two of the four issue miniseries that started so far, and that leads directly into the six dollar uh, lenticular cover of IVX number one. Uh, I have to order number one before I order number zero, which comes out first because they have a long lead time on number one because of the cover, and it's six dollars. So fuck you, Marvel. Um, yeah, fuck you all the way to the bank, yeah, Marvel. Yeah. Ryan Higgins is probably good. It's probably going to be his top ten books no. of the year. No, yeah, it won't be. Mo- it won't be a top ten book of that week. IVX. What? what? No, I'm not. IVX number one won't be a top ten book that week. Not for us. No. So what, I guess just to put what this else in the perspective, Death of X was not a top ten book the week it came out. I was out for about us. to say, uh, yeah, I don't think that they marketed that nearly. Like it sort of came out with a little, like it didn't. I didn't even know that it was coming out that week. But a fucking yeah, lenticular cover. Similar. Hopefully they can. I mean, are they promoting it as much as they promoted Champions? Champions wasn't a top ten book for me either. Hey, but what I'm saying is that really no, no. Will it be if I buy six more copies? But wasn't Champions, like, on the Diamond Charts, like, super high up there? Yeah. I sold, like, I don't know, 15 copies or something. Okay, so for you, so... Ordered... It's not how many he... Ordered he received and, enough to consider it a top 10 book in terms of... Whatever. ...quality Those received. Theoretically so, are, compared are in to, line. Compared to what I'm like getting... He's of, doing his job. No, compared to, what, compared to what I'm getting of Rebirth, most of the Rebirth titles, which is 13 titles a week, Champions number one... Might have cracked the top ten as far as issues ordered. It did not crack the top ten as far as issues sold for that week. Death of X number one did not. It, again, it, it probably cracked the top ten as much as issues ordered, but it did not crack the top ten for issues sold. Okay, with all the variants that Champions number one had, yes. and so apparently I was I was way off in terms of thinking that that it that it sold better than it did. So I was I'm already well, wrong. but did, with all the it, variants it would, that Champions number one had, did it make you? Ryan Higgins and the Comics Conspiracy more money in terms of the top ten of that week. Because at the end of the day, isn't that sort of what you're all about is the bottom line? So, I have, uh, with what's happened over the last couple months with Marvel, with their incredibly high... So, okay, so you go back, you go back 18 months, right? Pre, pre-Secret pre Wars, right? I feel like Secret Wars <laughs> fucking went on for 18 months. <laughs> Maybe that was just at the start of Secret Wars. But you go back there... Marvel Secret ha- Wars wanted to stay in the oven a little while. Marvel started all these varying covers that basically said, look, in order, and we've talked about this, in order to get this cover or this cover, you have to order X amount of the base cover over some other book. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right? Some, some other completely – it's basically trying to get people to match this number, and then you can order these variants. So they would do this sometimes. They would do this from for like some random books. titles. Right, kind of random, yeah. They would do this from time to time, and, and we'd hit them occasionally. Right? Well, with Secret Wars, they went all out. Right, variants up the ass. People are going crazy. We were selling variants by the bucket loads. Right, just incredible. And I mean, I said you last year sold more comics and made more money off Marvel than DC. First time, to my knowledge, in the store's history, at least since I've been here. Well, that was last year. That was last year. Was yeah, that Star Wars. Though? Star Wars was yeah. a big part of it, and and, and Secret Wars was a huge yeah. part of it. It's the first time for you. Yeah. Yeah. Huh. Yep. When I and I did my calculator, my 
dollars and dollars and units sold at the end of the year. They were higher for Marvel uh, on both uh, sides, and um, obviously because it would have been. I'm just uh, that's fair. If, if it's if it's units, it was, it's definitely dollar because I'm surprised it was the first year. I thought that Marvel was doing better in the previous years, but anyway, we've keep... always been higher DC than Marvel, but it's usually like you know fifty percent, forty percent higher. Um, got it, got it. Okay. My order for this next month, DC was 110% higher in, in, in dollar amount than Marvel. I only care about dollars. That's it all that tells you really how matters. bad. Yeah. And, and DC books are two ninety nine, and Marvel's five to six bucks a comic. Right, right but I don't care about the numbers. Yeah. I yeah. mean, if they're going to sell more with this fucking lenticular, I don't even know what that well, is. Well, so if you go, so again, I can't talk industry wide, but I'm, you're going to see some interesting stuff in the next few months sales charts. If so, if you go back to the start of you know, post Secret Wars, start of Marvel now, we went big on all the covers, big on all the variants, sold a shitload of those uh, hip hop covers. We, you know, we real strong. And then the kind of that second, third month, they started to peter out, and we went from selling you know five, ten copies of some of these variants, and there's five, six variants for every book, so we're talking fifty, sixty copies on top of the thirty or forty we're selling of the regular one, to three to five copies to two to one copies to there are there are for uh numerous books now with this relaunch from marvel we have sold one zero to one copies of some of these variants and and again i went in every time cutting 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 i w- they've increased the numbers we have to order of the comics in order to get the variants the variants are selling significantly less normally i would take a little bit of a loss on the main issue in order to get these variant covers, you make up for the sales from the variant covers, right? Yeah. The numbers, the math does not add up now. We qualify for almost no variant covers going forward. We will be carrying almost no Marvel variants going forward because one, we don't qualify, and two, they don't sell. So the hip-hop covers, can't get most of them going forward. All the, the Scotty Young covers, can't get them. The blank covers, can't get them. So we're done. And it's not just me. I've talked with many other retailers who were like, we're, like the interest has dropped off. Mm. The numbers to qualify are insane. We're done. We are not carrying Wait, any more Marvel So can variants. you, can you, I don't know how your NDA works or whatever, but can you give Say me... Say whatever an, I want. Can, okay. Can you give me an example just so that I understand? Cause, so I believe everything you're saying. I just want to understand like those blank covers, you used to have all of those. Like, mm-hmm. What are they requiring? Can you give me an example? Brock, of like- can you grab uh, Toby? Grab me that. Hand me the. Uh, hand me the um, book inside there. The retailer book. Yeah. No, no, no. Should be. Yeah, that. No. No, the retailer book. There should be another book in there. No, he, he grabbed one off of the pile. Oh, just- oh yeah, yeah. Give me the book and I'll, I'll read it. So they they so Marvel occasionally and they're starting to do it more. I think in the last month because I in the last month or two because I feel like. They're realizing the sales are going down. They are actually making more open order covers. So you have like Extraordinary X Men Annual, right? Okay. Normal book. It had like I think four different yeah, variant covers like- that were open order that we could order as many copies as we as we wanted. Okay. Ron Lim had a cover, and a bunch of other no name people had a cover. Um, so if I go here, a bunch of other no name like Ron Lim. Well, what's Ron Lim doing these days except for crappy variant ah, covers? Ah, no name though is a bit harsh. All right, so um, let's see. Monsters Unleash, number one. This is in the uh, the November order form that comes out next week. In order to get the hip-hop cover, we have to meet or exceed 125% of our orders for Civil War 2, number six. That's the issue that ships this week. Uh, with orders for the Monsters Unleash number one regular cover, and this variant is uh, open t- to order all you want. So if we order, let's say we got 100 copies of uh, Civil War Two, number six. We have to order 125 copies of Monsters Unleashed, number one, and then we can order as many copies as we want of this hip hop variant. Now they also have the base cover. They have a Nomura variant, which is open order, a Frank Avella variant, which is open order. So, oh, and a new monster, which is open order. Do those so, count towards? Nope. The- nope. Base cover only. So. Th- the main cover. So they've got three some op- serious data analysts doing their job and saying, "How do we maximize revenue?" And, and sometimes it's working, and sometimes it's not. And I'm, t- I'm telling you, it's it's not going to work very much. So, uh, Mighty Thor number fifteen, meteor exceed 125 percent of your orders for Mighty Thor number nine, and you can order the story thus far variant. So think about this: you have issue nine of a comic book, and then you have issue fifteen of a comic book. 
unless something significant has happened, it is very unlikely that you're going to sell more copies of issue 15 of a comic than 9. Generally, things tend to trend downwards. Why would I, why would I order 125% of my order for Thor 15 over Mighty Thor number 9? Now, this is the start of the new story arc, but the start of the new story arc is not enough for me to increase my order 125% or 25% over my order of a comic from six months ago. Okay, so it's untenable. I'm, I'm yeah. I, I, oh, so here's your IBX. We're, we're, I don't, well, it, I don't know what we the have. The math works out better for you the worse you're selling for the books, which is weird. Yeah. So I don't know. I don't have the IVX one yeah, orders here, yes but for no. IVX number well, two. Well, if you're only ordering four because you're only selling four in your shop, you only have to order one more with that math. Yeah. And if I order 50, I have to order 12 more, right? Yeah. Right, but I don't – and so, okay, maybe I'm wrong, but at first blush, it seems like this that's not a good argument to make in, t- in well, terms of like but, any comic shop, like, you know, if they're selling four, uh, you know. Yeah, but, but my is, point – Is this their my target point audience? I mean, maybe is, it is. is. Having to have one stuck on the shelf, not a big thing. But if you're, if you're like – Comparing against Civil War number six, it's become sort of an insane math because if you sell well on that book, you have to order a shit ton more yep. than – so say, for instance, Thor number nine. If all Ryan was selling was 10 issues a month and that's all he was ordering, he'd only have to order 13. Right. But if he's ordering 30 copies a month, he now has to sell an additional – like six or something, yeah. in, in order to then get this variant cover. So here, here's like another one, right? Deadpool the Duck, number one. I called it! Right. Order 150% of your orders for Deadpool number 19. So they want you to order 150% of your Deadpool number, and I believe that was a Civil War II crossover as well. Uh, Which number? Number 19, 19. To get access to this, hey, hey, Ron Lim variant cover. So basically... So few of these books are going to be on the shelf because stores cannot order these. I've talked with countless retailers who are like, we're done with Marvel's variants. It's going to be real ugly for these guys. But this is I don't know how we ended up in this conversation. Let's go to the conversation I was going to have. There is a shimmer of hope in the future. No pun intended. Whew. We have Shimmer. That's a great superhero. We have I thought you meant hope. Where is this going? We have hope. Hope that's another. Great <laughs> we have the uh, Death of X Nyquil comic book that exists now. <laughs> <laughs> it's so bad, leading to the I'm sure groundbreaking IVX in humans oh, versus X Men. But it's series. got a lenticular cover. By right. the way, what is lenticular? Is that just the foil? That's like the one plastic shit or whatever. It, it's foil. It moves. I don't know what the fuck it does. Anyway. But they have – we talked about this briefly a week or two ago, but there's a lot more – well, let me, there's more info, not a lot more info. But there's more info about this. Resurrection, the post-IVX thing. I think it's pronounced Resurrection. Resurrection. Ion. Resurrection. Um, we now know much more about it. They have not uh, announced creative teams yet, but we have uh, basically a complete relaunch of the X-Men – line of comics from from marvel uh we have cable number one what generation x number one eh. gene gray number one and, and oh, uh, Iceman, which we talked about oh, number wolf, one super wolf uh weapon x number one which is appears to be all the wolverines team up uh, so that's just wolverines yeah and it's almost like someone at marvel was listening to this podcast because we are getting X Men Blue and X Men Gold. That's like just a dream come true. We just I, talked about this what, last week, two weeks ago. Two weeks ago, right? and I can't even here say. they are. I so can't even say. we don't know if this is going to end on Candy or end uh, Extreme X or end uh, whatever. What is it? Um, I don't even know what the other book is called. What's the other X Men book? Extraordinary, right extraordinary X Men, and all new. Yeah, and I mean. It just possibly could be a relaunch of all these titles. Now, when you think X-Men Gold, X-Men Blue, they are – that's your 90s Jim Lee, Chris Claremont era X-Men, the best of the best, and Cable, um, <laughs> and, and Bishop. Uh, oh, Bishop's so good too. And so, look, 
talk a lot of shit about Marvel on here because boy, how do they make some dumb decisions? And and this Inhuman stuff has been just the worst, the <laughs> absolute worst. Can you can you be truthful? I mean, it's the worst. But here, look, if we're ending every Inhumans comic and we're getting these comics and they're good creators and it's the original characters back and it's not some fucking bullshit and it's not some cartoony social justice warrior nonsense. If it's just regular X-Men comic books, I'll be third in line at this table, of course, but I'll be (laughs) right there. To read these books and enjoy them. Yeah, it's it's hopeful at least. Yeah, yeah, it is hopeful. Don't Man, mess X-Men, up X Men ninety two is just such garbage. Um, yeah, I'm very very excited. I mean, I don't even think that needs to be said. Yeah, that is that sounds incredible. Yeah, so at least Generation X, X Men Gold, X Men Blue, Cable. These are all successful titles in the past. They have great. I mean, I mean, it was called X Men Blue and Gold, but that's what the teams were called. It was Uncanny X Men and X Men. So. Totally, these could totally work. Um, I have, a, a, you know, we don't have no creative teams yet, which worries me. And why announce them if you don't have creative teams? But hopefully, it's like, hey, there's a light at the end of this tunnel. We're getting to it, guys. Give us a few months. Uh, I just, yeah, I don't know. I'm from Mississippi. <laughs> uh, it's the show me state. Yeah. So, yeah. well, if you want to take a little, uh, a little guess at some of the creative team, or, Missouri. Or, 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 I'm sorry, I'm not. I'm not actually from there. It's actually Missouri. <laughs> Are the teams here? We have on the X Men Gold Post. We have Colossus. We have, uh, uh, I believe that's Psylocke. Um, nope, she was blue. No, who is? It's not Kitty Pride, is it? That's a Ooh. weird ass looking Kitty Pride. If it is, um, we have Storm. We have uh, Phoenix. Oh, you know, I actually, I really like. Uh, Her name is Jean Grey in the nineties. The other oh. one. What? The other one. Rachel. 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 Rachel Gray. Oh. I really like Rachel. I've always liked Rachel. It's because she's like an emo teen. What? Of course you like her. Uh, we have Old Man Logan in the shot, which is like, well, we'll see if we get Wolverine back. But we have the cl- we have the original uh, All-New X-Men, and you also have the sort of uh, uh, 90s Joe Mad era kind of X-Men in here. So, uh, you how, know. How funny that they did, like, the, Wolverine, Colossus, Nightcrawler, that group. Like, the, the like spin move on on uh, on i guess all of us but especially you with uh, the the death of wolverine you're like fuck marvel he'll be back in six months <laughs> and they're just like and no there's seven wolverines just not not the regular one and exactly and yeah. yeah exactly I mean, so th- you are 100 percent wrong <laughs> is what like but, but, o- but there's now way counts, m- more wolverines than ever yeah. before yeah, yeah. Old yeah. Man Logan well, counts, though. there's like 12 weapon x's he, running he, around he, he, does not count. Higgins and you and probably me and whoever else was saying he will be back alive in six months. Yeah. And it's, what, over a year later and he's That's still not. Because, I mean, don't get me wrong, yeah, they replaced him with Old Man Logan. But, like, I don't know, it's just sort of a, a, a nice little fuck you to the fans, like, humorously. Well, Marvel has a good track record of, like... When Phoenix died under the Morrison run, I had the exact same reaction. I'm yeah, like, oh, yeah. she'll be right back. Yeah, That was a decade ago. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. She'll be uh, right back. And yeah. now, like, she kind of is, but isn't. But Yeah, I don't count it as. Well, real quick, I, yeah. real quick, X-Men Blue, all the photos are, I mean, OG X-Men, it's Cyclops, Beast, uh, Iceman, Jean Grey, and uh, Angel. So. Wait, 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 wait. Iceman Blue? Weren't Iceman and Angel... Sorry, I meant X Men Blue. Uh, what weren't Iceman and Angel part of the Gold Team? Don't no, remember. no, maybe not Iceman. Oh, does he know about the Iceman comic? Angel, yeah, so there's an Iceman comic. Angel, because it's I, the it's the it's oh, the new I gotta one. Look right? this up. I swear, uh, Angel only Iceman. was Gold Team. I don't remember. Who, uh, yeah, well, again, I I think you have X Men Blue appear to be OG. X Men Gold appear to be all new X Men. All okay, new, all okay, different okay, X Men. Okay. That seems. I guess to be, I'm. Accepting if if they need to change the teams, I'm not going to get my now. Pain, can you imagine? In a twist. Can you imagine if we have an X Men comic book with Cyclops, Jean Grey, Wolverine, Colossus, Angel, all in a comic book together? It's like, it's like the greatest thing I've like, ever heard. And you know what, dude? When was the last time any of those characters have been in a fucking X Men comic? Here's book? the thing: I don't I even dick around occasionally. But I don't it's even like, want ugh. like. 
you bottom know, some, garbage. Some, some big name writer to be on it. Like they don't need to put Lemire or Sewell or, or who or, or Jason Aaron or, or, or Bendis or Claremont. They don't need to put those guys on these books. I just want a good solid run. I don't need so another. Did you send in your fanfic? I don't need. Yeah. It well, there ha- was. It had, whole, me, it had this character named Bryce making out with Gambit. It was there weird. was. I, I could. I actually was looking for it earlier. I, I read it earlier Deadpool today, was and watching. I. I, I couldn't go back and find the link, so you're going to have to l- allow me to paraphrase here. But there was comments from editorial from Marvel saying that we're getting away from the X-Men fighting themselves and worrying about the future of the mutants and blah, blah, blah. We're getting back to just some regular superhero stuff with the X-Men. So this is, like, potentially the greatest. No, and this is the start. No, no, no As no. long as they're back on Earth. No, what? <laughs> what are you talking about, dude? The whole fucking like time with the Shi'ar was incredible uh, under Claremont. And okay. then separately, I, I don't, the rise and fall of the Shi'ar Empire was a great arc. You read? I don't dispute oh, and that. By, oh, and the Joss Whedon when they're in space? What are you ta- Some of their best stories are in space. Some of their best stories are in space. Not in Limbo. But I don't like the whole idea of the X-Men cannot survive on Earth anymore. If crap. the fucking Terrigen Mist Cloud is not gone by the end of IVX, I'm just saying, okay? I'm just saying. I'm waiting for Brock to make another fart joke, because it's been at least two weeks since we had one of those. <sighs> you made the sound earlier, so I was okay. I cannot be held responsible for my actions if that goddamn cloud is not gone by the end of IVX. It, it, that cloud has stayed, stayed around longer than a lot of things have been gone. It's yeah. the worst. That cloud has, I think, been like around longer than logan has been dead like <laughs> there's some crazy shit with that cloud longer than hope has been missing hashtag where's hope even though we kind of know well let's see do we actually oh, have hope man. in any of these shots um no there's nate gray there's there's life nate Eld. gray well like or like uh young what picture are you young looking at cable. This is, there's all these mashups of all these different characters in the background of it, so it's like oh, the awesome. Oliveri one, the future cable. Is it in this previews or uh, no? I, I got the pictures oh, well, here. I'm not there's, looking at your fucking computer right now. There's dude. there's a bunch of uh, Liefeld shots on here. Oh, oh, I love Liefeld. I don't care. They don't need. Oh, and, uh, Jean, and um, Jubilee's the leader of Generation X. They did announce that. Yay! Well. Yeah, yeah. Is she still a vampire? Hopefully, fucking not. <laughs> Dude, there's there's no way she's not a vampire. Uh, 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 there's this, no way she's not a vampire. This might open the floodgates to get she, you know a, a classic new warriors. Uh, Making a deal with Mephisto gets turned back so, in time so what? that she's a human again. You mean uh, Dracula? Or she's she's Not a fucking Mephisto. vampire. <laughs> yeah, but Mephisto, what does he have to the Well you can make fucking you can make a deal like he did with Spider Man. Yeah, I, I I got the reference there, Toby. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See? So, see? The, and the Someone Weapon X books here. The Weapon oh. X the Weapon X book has Weapon X Wolverine, Sauron, X S- Sauron? Sauron? X- Sauron? Yeah. The pterodactyl? <laughs> That is yeah, awesome. That's him. That's him. X twenty three, uh, Deadpool, Saber Two, and that is fucking Deadpool, Wild Child. Come well, here. You know X Men better. Yeah, than me. no. It's, if, if it has Saber Two, it's probably Wild Child. Is that Wild Child? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. A Wild Child. Yeah. 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 Pull that shit out of my ass. I remember that <laughs> idiot character's name. So, so um, wait a second. So, so the Wolverine's book is going to be finally the the Black Ops X Men book. I mean, we don't know what it's going to be, but God. Please, Marvel, release some real comics. By the way, it's just, just like the Old Man Logan movie, there's no way that this oh! doesn't shit. That the was bed. the other thing I didn't put on my list. Talk about that Logan trailer. Did you watch that, Bryce? Trailer? What do you no, think? What do you not. think? No, I did not watch the trailer. I'm going to say that movie 100%. Why do I need to watch the trailer? Should we talk I'm, about the trailer? I'm Sure. I'm 100% going to see that movie yeah, yeah. and 100% excited. Yep. I do uh, not who did not off. see the trailer except for Bryce? Wait, 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 wait. but is there a spoiler shit in the trailer? No. Um, I mean, what do you? You didn't see it, Toby? No, I'm kidding. Oh, wh- if if you tell me that Logan is in the trailer, that's a spoiler. There is. There are. There's a Hugh Jackman looking guy. There with are claws. two <laughs> other major X Men characters that are in this. Well, there's one major and one minor X Men character that are in this well, trailer. No, they're both fucking major, you asshole. Oh, well, then I there was get... one old and one new X Men character. No, not new, young. Okay, can I can I guess? New enough? Can I guess? Yeah. Yeah. Give, me, give me just the a few old guys. Who's the classic? Is... Who's the classic? The okay. old guy, Cyclops. No. no. Okay. The old guy is fucking Sabretooth. No. no. Jesus. Oh, Hawkeye. Uh... It's Hawkeye. No, I was gonna say Hawkeye, so, but so, he's not, so Logan they is... don't have the property. 
very loosely based on the Old Man Logan movie, apparently. Very loosely based. Also very loosely based on the end. I mean, so in yeah. the original Old Man Logan, the characters, ironically... Yeah, Hulk, he deals Hawkeye. With, yeah, Hulk, Hawkeye, Mysterio, and Red Skull. Yeah, characters like, they can't you do. Like yeah. They don't have... Remember well, the Age of Ultron? Well, Hawkeye got replaced by someone else. Remember the Age of Ultron movie with, uh, what? Hawk, with uh, Wolverine and Invisible Woman? Oh, wait, no. Sorry. It had neither of those characters. Yeah, Hawkeye yeah. got replaced by someone wait, wait, when? a little more familiar to the X-Men universe. In the trailer. In the trailer. It's, I mean... Con- He's really helped Logan kinda, with, with his, with his kinda. things, mentally. He's really helped... Um, I, I don't fucking... The oldest X-Man character ever. Cable. You could say, <laughs> he, he could say he's the original X-Men. Professor X? Professor X. Wait, James McAvoy? No, 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 no Patrick Stewart. Yeah, this really? Is, this is both their yeah. last roles. They're both their last times. Holy fuck, that's awesome! This is both their last times. <laughs> that is a spoiler that I'm kind of angry that you gave away because <laughs> I would have been really surprised in the movie. But that's really cool. Well, do you want to know who the other character is? Yeah. Have of you course. played Last of Us, dude? Can do I you know can last I give of us? you a guilty confession about Last of Us? Yeah, it's not that I, great. I did play Last of Us. And yeah, I agree that it's not that great, but yeah, but my perfect. that it's wasn't fun, my it's a game, sure. Yeah, it's a fun exactly. Game. That wasn't my guilty confession. My guilty confession is I'm fucking so bad at video games. Apparently, <laughs> it was on normal, and I could not beat it. I had to turn it down to easy. That's fine. Well, I, it's fucking embarrassing. Anyway, um, by I the way, beat it cable, on hard. Fucking, of course <laughs> you did, and you probably loved every minute of it. Just because well, you love everything, you bastard. There were a few times where I'm like, should I lower the difficulty? Because just, this is taking a long time. Just to make Bryce but feel I better? powered through it. Uh, fuck you. <laughs> uh, anyway, Cable's way older than Professor X. Um, okay, the other one. Okay, so you said it's not Cyclops. So if you've seen, if so you played Last of Us, you have the adult Fucking character. Patrick Stewart, that is crazy cool. And there's a... That there's, is so cool. There's a, there's a kid that he's taking care of. This trailer reminded me a lot of Last of Us yeah. because Wolverine's taking care of... A or, kid that he's taking care of, that's Cable. Or... <laughs> he's or, taking care of Hope. No, or it's a girl. the professional. Yeah, Hope is a girl. Or the professional. Sure. Oh, yeah. In the professional, he's taking care of a little girl. So it's Cable! <sighs> Cable's no. a girl now? Keep thinking. What the fuck is wrong with you? No. Keep thinking. He's taking care of a little girl. In the Cable series, Cable's taking care of a little girl. No. Keep thinking. I'm just too busy going, I guess if you want to count the Ultimate Universe Cable. <laughs> Wait, what are you guys talking about? The Ariel Olivetti Cable, where he's taking care of Baby Hope? She's a little girl? Yes. Well, no, I just... Can you give me a second when, when clue? You, you Obviously, fun? I don't yes. get it. She has claws. Oh. Wait. That's She's a lot like Wolverine. Yeah. Just a girl. You one might Wait, say she is Wolverine. X twenty three? Yeah. Yeah. Is in the trailer? Yeah. 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 She's who's she played by? I don't a know. little girl. Random person. And and they show her with the two claws? No. Well yeah. they maybe. Don't really, kinda. Could, if you go frame by frame, maybe. Well, I haven't done that yet. But what the fuck? She has nothing to do. Not that I'm surprised that no. Fox would do this. No, it's about so the so the plot appears to be Wolverine, long retired, the X Men are gone, the world is Kind of in disarray of some. This sounds incredible. Some some fashion. <clears throat> it's the um, start of Old Man Logan, just without the good stuff. Yeah. Well, well we don't know. I mean, the trailer looked amazing. No, uh, stuff meaning Hulk, Hawkeye. Uh, well, <laughs> that's not the good stuff. And uh, Professor X somehow is still around and comes back to Wolverine, who's rugged out, living in the middle of nowhere, and says, "You, there's not many of us left, but you have to help us with something. There's a girl you have to go see." So this is like. Think of the X Men movie, but like via the Deadpool route, which is like there's three characters in this movie. There's not a billion characters in CG and world ending. This is just the three of them on a road trip. So it's the last of them. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. It looks fantastic, dude. That sounds fucking awesome, like Mad Max Logan. Yeah, yeah. and yeah. Like, an, that is so cool sounding. And there's a super violent R rated uh, uh, Red Band trailer uh, with tons of blood. That's pretty great. So. Dude, hopefully they release that shit rated that R. R. Are they going to release a rated R? Do I we know? I think so. I think so. I think Deadpool was just so successful. Yeah, I, I think they're going great. Wolverine 3 was just like... Wait. Was it 2 or... Well, it was, was 2. It only two. Tokyo? Two, so 2. They've only made 2. Got it. Yeah. 2. It was like... I've never seen so many claws and so little blood. Like, yeah, what the yeah, fuck? Yeah. Like, I liked that movie, but it was like, yo, this is this is PG thirteen violence, right? It yeah. was crazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I liked it too. But uh, but I remember sitting in the theater and being like, 
look, I'm not a fucking prude. I don't know if that's going to shock anybody at this table, but but you know, there should be more blood with like a man with claws coming out of his hands. Well, the problem with the edit, with the director cut, I I guess the bloody version or whatever, like the blood was, it was kind of weirdly like just CG. Like it wasn't great. You just love director's cuts. I well. Only if, only if DC puts them out. <laughs> uh, um, no, the, the, the bloody version of Wolverine was I never, fine. I never saw the bloody version. Did they, they just fix added him. more blood? Toby's I mean, was giving it me that, this, was yeah, it? Toby's giving me this look. It didn't fix it. It was, it was the same movie. It just, there was blood. Was it any better, Toby? I sort of remember there was flashback scenes in different orders, and there was more of it, and it made more was sense there? to me. Yeah. The only thing that I didn't like about the original version was the ending. The ending was shit, but the rest of the well, movie the, was Well, the, the ending didn't change, and that was still shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. All right, what's Either that? way, I like both versions. Yeah. Oh, but we got Suicide Squad director Scott coming out. Oh, soon. thank yes, God! Thank God! Thank God! Eleven extra minutes. You Eleven have, minutes of Joker. Oh, you have not gotten enough sleep. You can get more sleep now. Hopefully, they can I rearrange those scenes a little bit too. So we have potentially, hopefully, a great last X Men movie. We have potentially, hopefully, the return of great X Men comic books. Good time to be a fan. Good time to be Bryce. We'll I, see. I guarantee none of these, none of these. We'll work see in a couple months. And, these, and they all suck. <laughs> see, this is this is, this this is, is how much Bryce. this is how much Marvel has beat their readership down. Is when Bryce is like, yeah. Well, look. So I have. No, it's just we, the worst. we have we have a regional rep that comes around to all the comic book stores. Right, he came by on on over the weekend. Why didn't you invite me over and yeah. say like <laughs> you didn't have to? You wouldn't have got a word in edgewise because I basically was like, I need to unload on you. What is wrong with Whoa. Marvel? Yeah, sounds sexy. Um, I uh, I would have also unloaded all over him, and um, so yeah. he basically said, "Look, I'm in the smallest stores in the deep south. I'm in New York and San Francisco." Every retailer wait, wait, that doesn't sound regional at all. He's well, in the deep south, and he's in New York, he, and he's he, here. He travels. <laughs> he he like he's, what region is that? He's a regional rep, but he travels for the company, so he's he's talking to stores all over the world. But he's a regional or over the country, but he's a regional rep for here, right? But he goes to all the big meetings and all the big stuff. So he's like, look across the board, every store is telling us they're seeing the same problems. With, with with the Marvel titles, mm-hmm. so this is not like exclusive to us. This is, and this is the distributor, and and they're like, we're caught in the middle. I mean, we just push the books out. They're not our comics. We just sell them to you. Did you just point at the wall and just point at Solo and point at Prowler? Well, what I told him was and point at what, Great I, I mean, Avengers. One, one of my big points and, and just say what the fuck. Well, one of my big points was, you know, this isn't a. Racist, uh, ra- racist. God, I, I was watching racist. that daily. I was watching that. I was watching that. Uh, that last week tonight or Daily Show, whatever. I saw that on. This isn't a racist or sexist thing or anything. Um, there are great characters of every race, gender, creed, religion, creed, religion. Yeah, sure, right. Color. And 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 there are great new characters that pop up all the time. I said this is simply Marvel misunderstanding their actual readership and. You need your, you know, we say this all the time. You need your base comics, like something what Rebirth has done, and then you can have all these books on the side that experiment and do whatever you want. And if they click a Miles Morales, then you move them in and you and you make some books about them, and they sell really well. But launching 10, 12, 15 titles with completely unproven characters, regardless of of race, color, sexuality, religion, anything, is is going to fail ninety nine percent of the time. Um, so I sold. I finally sold sold a copy of Solo. I sold one. Other than the one you sold to me, or was that well, the one to me? Those hip hop variants don't count because that's like uh, something separate. I actually, uh, sold a copy of a comic to a customer. I still have not sold another copy of Mosaic. So two total copies of Mosaic. Um, Great. You know, uh, uh, Prowler, the comic this week that you can actually tell because I have like a couple copies for the shelf. I unfortunately did not. Um, I was not so smart with that Doctor Strange comic. I did actually order because that was when that I was, first that ordered. Was, that was when the orders were first done, and they pushed it back a week. I think they pushed it back a week or two or something. Yeah. So, like, God, it's so weird. It's going to be a real ugly couple of months for Marvel, and and God, these X Men well, books I mean, can't come look, fast okay, enough. Okay, Marvel or DC's coming out with Vigilante Southland. Yeah, it's a miniseries. It's a miniseries. Six yep. issues yep. done. Raven right? miniseries. Raven miniseries. Dead Man. Dead Man. Yep. They're doing the the Hawkman and um, Death of Hawkman. Death, Death of Hawkman miniseries. one. Yep. You know, it's like they're they're going with these miniseries to kind of just get these characters out. And there. don't don't be fooled. All these books launching from Marvel are also miniseries. Oh yeah. They just don't call them miniseries. Yeah. 
But the thing is, is like you know, if there was an interest in Vigilante after a six issue mini, then they keep it going. Then they can keep it yep. going, or yep. they start it over. And you well, know. I believe Flintstones was originally solicited as six issues. They just solicited a seventh issue, so it's going to mm-hmm. go. It's going to keep going. And that's oh exactly. god, that fourth issue! I have read for it on mon- monogamy. Yeah, I have read oh, for it's yet. awesome! I have read for it. So uh, we did. We talked about uh, all sorts of stuff here. We do have um, one other big thing to talk about. Uh, we do want to talk. Uh, you know, actually, let's do a couple questions, and then we'll talk at the very end. We could do Walking Dead, because I don't want people to get spoiled if they haven't heard it. So we're going to um, do the outro and then do it? We'll do the outro, then we'll talk some Walking Dead, yeah, because that's a pretty big one. That'll allow Bryce and Toby, if they want to... To leave. If they want to peace out for a few Even minutes. though I think that Toby sort of spoiled it from earlier, but don't say if he was right or wrong. Uh, let's let's hit up a couple questions here on Twitter. Um this is from Tom uh, Cantwell on Twitter. He says, "Can you explain comic book binding and the do's and don'ts of getting comic oh, Bryce and uh, absolutely Bryce I and can. Brock? Why don't you guys yeah. take this while I get the rest of these ready? Please. Um, well, I think that I mean for me, I I I, I enjoyed. I think it's good to to have a practice one. Like you get a yep. just a shit series that you don't give. You know that you have an interest in, but it's you can it doesn't matter. <clears throat> yep. So mine was Booster Gold's '80s run. Mine was Operation um, Galactic Storm." And, uh, you know, practiced, I, I learned that, you know, the, you want to do the over so binding versus just the glue. Yep. Um, I'll explain what these are for people that. Yeah. Know. So, so just glue would be, you know, the, it, they, they, so hold on, hold they, on, I'm sorry. First, you have to prep your book. Let's start at the beginning. You have to prep <laughs> your book. So you get all of your comics, uh, you know, to, you to, let's, let's go now. back even one more step. Comic book binding is mm. the practice of taking your single issue comic comics. books Thank and you. binding it into a usually uh, beautiful hardcover comic, much like a uh, dictionary or encyclopedia. And this is done in a book binder. or graphic novel. But I mean, they don't tend to look like that. They tend to look. No, they look more like the library. They have. Like, s- if you go to the library, you see the bound versions of old magazines. Sometimes they have. Some companies will do the graphic covers, mm. but most of the time, it's just going to be like a flat leather. So the hard covers are not considered graphic novels. No, sure, of course they are. But I mean, in this specific instance, it's okay. you're making a graphic novel out of comic books, but it's. Okay. They're, they're styled, usually styled more. Okay, like I see what you're saying. Anyway, so I liken them more to graphic novels. Apparently, there's some dissent in the ranks. Uh, they do, Ryan well, is all right. All a graphic they, novel is is a collection of comic books. That's so. why, yeah. So, yeah. so, but Brian is right that it is just a collection of comics. I started doing it because they were collections that maybe I didn't want to separately buy the graphic novel. So instead of buying the graphic novel for 30 bucks, I'd spend 30 bucks binding the comics. <laughs> um, but, uh, you know, another reason is, you know, maybe they, maybe they don't have the collection that you want in a single book, a single hardcover uh, of comics. That's or, what I did. Rebels. Yep. Four trades, solicited a fifth, canceled it. Yep, and, and grabbed and, all the and issues. What, and what also happened is, uh, you know, a lot of times maybe there's going to be uh, a collection that you know they did a different version than you liked. Like maybe your, I'm just going to throw out an example. I'm having a tough time finding one. Maybe you want to do Infinity War one through six, but you want to include some crossover in between issues four and five from some other book, and that's not the way that Marvel prints it. And you have that book, and that's how you'd like to reread it if you ever do. Uh, it's up to you to uh, to bind it that way. It, 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 you can personalize. So a lot of times you'll have you'll Thank have a, you'll you'll base it off of a, of a creator, like a run of a creator had on a series. But there's always like that one fill an issue mm-hmm. that when you get the collection like the visionaries collection or whatever that issue's missing from the collection they yeah. don't include it and you're like well i want that issue in there or like they yep. don't include some prelude or prologue to something in it and you're like but that's like something that's key you know yep that's another great example so what you do is you collect all of the books that you want include and, and you just like Literally put them in order. And what I did, and I assume these guys did, is you take your exacto knife and you cut off, like cut out the ads. If you don't want to keep them in, you leave them in. Obviously, if you if you don't mind, you remove the. St- no, no, wait. Do they remove the staples? They do. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, they remove the, for the older for the older comics. It's easier to remove um, the ad pages because you could just rip one yeah. side and Windows. the other side would be an ad. Um, yeah, Windows the Windows newer point. ones you can't because <laughs> it's it, it, it they're printed on the same thing so sometimes you would have to i had to glue some pages like when they had those promos 
for or previews for like Power Girl in the back of something. Like I had to glue pages together. Um, so there's a lot of different things that happen in it. But what Bryce is talking about also is 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 important is is mapping it out oh, is figuring out so exactly what order um, cuz I know you Ryan did your death of superman and you had you had removed those last pages on all the previous issues where doomsday's pounding and you're probably kicking yourself in the butt for doing it on the one of those $300 comic book, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um well like booster gold number 1's like 40 bucks yeah. but you know it's I think it's something that's really enjoyable to do because it it allows you to kind of build your own library. You know, it, it allows you to pick out things that you you really like or you really enjoy. Or it's just you have a run of something and you're like, I, I like it. I'm never going to sit here and pull out single issues and read them. Just bind it together. Get it put together so that you have a nice little less – takes up less space when you do that. Yep. Per- so that, that was perfectly explained. Um, so one of the examples that I used was uh, – and Mr. Higgins has this as well – is the the New Warriors. Um, I believe the entire – that entire first volume of New Warriors, including crossovers, um, I have bound into three separate volumes. Each one is about – what is it? 18 books each or something like that. Um, uh, new- you're, talking about, you're talking about the whole run? I didn't do the whole run. I only went up to like issue fifty or sixty or seventy or something like that. Well, seventy five is the last issue. The creative team switch was at twenty five, mm-hmm. twenty six and on with stuff. The creators because I did. Mm-hmm. I so believe- maybe I did the whole run in three volume. I did something similar mm-hmm. to Ryan. Ryan did one hundred percent of the New Warriors, but I, I had well, didn't, did maybe it was up through issue fifty. I did. you didn't have the clone conspiracy stuff in there. Clone conspiracy. <laughs> or sorry, the clone, the clone saga. <laughs> Not yet. Did you do the um, time and time again the New Warriors Nova Night Thrasher crossover? That sound familiar? Because that, 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 that ends not, at fifty. That ends at fifty. Okay, then no, that does not sound familiar. But I did. Okay, so maybe it was something else. But anyway, my point is, is that I'm telling you guys. Okay, you want to talk about what was it, the do's and don'ts? The do is just do it because it's awesome. <laughs> the uh, the the most fun part is mapping out. Like because a lot of collections. I mean, now they're much better than they were when we started doing this a half a decade ago. Um, about including like. You know that that crossover that Darkhawk did, but they're not collecting Darkhawk in like a single volume, right? So you you get your Darkhawk and you get the one issue that he crossed over with here and there. Um, and thank God I didn't ever cut up my my original uh, Deadpool's because he had a couple crossovers, but I would have bound them all. I just didn't get around to it. But now they're much more uh, expensive, and even though I'm the worst and I'll never sell them. Um, the the idea is that you get to map out how you remember reading it and how you would want to read it, uh, or maybe you know how your kids would want to read it. Like I love the idea that my son would ever read any of this bullshit that I bound, even though I guarantee mm-hmm. you he won't because it'll all be on his, um, on his you know iPad twenty seven. Um, so you know we'll see. But anyway, it's a great uh, it's a great experience. It's great for getting in there with the comics that you grew up with that you love these stories. Um, you know, map them out, cut them up, you know, put them together, get back this really sexy, like hardcover of this book, show your wife, she won't care, uh, put it in the garage, never look at it again. It's great. It's great. Well, the other thing is, is also, um, there's a lot of good resources out there for mapping and also for seeing what other people have done. Yep. Um, I think it was uncollected editions. Uh, there's a bunch of websites and a bunch of those yeah. threads yeah. sort of got necroed, but, um, but just Google it is yeah. what Brock is saying because there are a ton of resources. If you want to look at like, you can just Google like New Warriors comic binding map or something mm-hmm. like G- Operation Galactic Storm comic binding map or some something like that. Like there are a ton of great resources or resources out there. Um, Except for like when you're almost done, you're like on the last thing, and then all of a sudden you hear of. Oh, they might have had an appearance or something in this. Shit. Yeah, on that last <laughs> post. Because they're all form threads. Um, yeah, also good luck with your Legion binding, Higgins, because oh, that's yeah. going to be impossible. Yeah, I got like two and a half long boxes of stuff. It's, oh. ha- it's happening. Yeah. Uh, we're going to go through a few of these real quick. Uh, that's from Keith on Twitter. He says, Saturn Girl's appearance in Batman last week. Confirmation DC is entrusting the Legion of Superheroes with Tom King. Oh, please, God, be real. Please. I, I, I didn't read it, so, please. Thank, so yeah, no, I didn't know. Yeah, yeah, no problem. Uh, please be real. Please be real. <laughs> it would be awesome. I would love it. 
Uh, let's see. I got a few here. Um, this is from Ale- uh, uh, oh, sorry, Alexis. He says, should Marvel uh, reboot to its original numbering? Spider-Man 800 something, X-Men 700 yes. something. Yeah, yes, absolutely. But you know what they... Just they, to and then not renumber six months later. Well, no, uh, what I'm saying is they won't until it's like a, a, a big number. Like, yeah. they'll keep going with... Well, didn't they just do that with Uncanny? Like... Or is it not yet? No, they did it with Silver Surfer 200. Silver Surfer 200, perfect example, where it was like Silver Surfer 13, 14, and they're like, oh, you know what? This would actually technically be number 200. It's actually, number 200! It's actually issue six. Of the uh, but that way they can charge an extra few bucks and make it... <laughs> whether or not they do, it's that. cool that they like sort of... It's like a callback. Like It's cool that they... That they, that they acknowledge, I, I like, of, yeah, this isn't issue six. Like, he has been around for a long time. I like that. I kind of like when they do the dual numbers, if they're going to mm. go that route. I like having the issue six. The dual numbers gives, gives Brock a hernia. He's trying to organize them. If well, I had to listen to another comic no, conspiracy it, podcast the, the, with Brock complaining the, about organizing the comics the in the dual, back issues. The dual numbers make it somewhat easier to do. Like, on Daredevil, the I loved the artist on Daredevil because... It wasn't uh, the the uh, the real number wasn't actually on the printing of it. He drew it into the cover art. So like I, I can't remember. Is it Mac? Yeah, but that's a, that's that's yeah, a, of all yeah, comics. That's a single example. Like that that has not been duplicated in anything else. You're looking no, at. but when they did when they went yeah and that was did, cool. uh, Fantastic Four. They had the numbering going. Thor had the similar numbering. But again, it gets confusing if they're going to do this another time. You know, it it could get confusing for people, but I I doubt they'll go back. What are they what what are they going to really go back to X Men? No, they're going to wait till they get they're going to wait till they get to a fifty or a one hundred mark, and that's when they're going to do. I it. mean, technically, Wolverine's yeah. already had his nine hundred issue. But I mean, the fact of the matter is, is this is always the pattern in comics? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We can't number for shit. It, it is the question: Should they go back? Yeah. The answer is no. Except for when it becomes like a big, big number, like a, yeah. a big number. I mean, I, I hope they get over it and just put everything back and ignore it but, going but, forward. But, I mean, what's and wrong never with relaunch Hipster again. Higgins over here. You know that they won't. Like, yeah, I, mean, I know it's sad. It is sad, but you know, you can complain about it or you can get over it. See, I, I have no clue if they will or won't. Just because all of this kind of goes into <laughs> patterns. If they find that. You know, when we celebrate issue 800, we sell more copies than when we were issue one. They'll keep it until the sale. Well, they relaunched it for one issue for, what, X-Men 600, and then went right back. And it's just so annoying. At this point, I don't even care. No, but I mean, my point is, is they're just following the sales trends, meaning as soon as the sales trends report larger numbers are selling better, they'll switch back to larger numbers. We got one here from Dr. Razor. 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 says, do people still read Spawn comics? <laughs> and what are your opinions on the Spawn Batman crossover? <laughs> so uh, Spawn is one of those books that we actually weren't for years. We ordered no copies of. But I had a few subscribers re-sign up for it. Um, and I started carrying a couple more copies in the shelf. Well, we had a lot of people coming in asking for it. No. Well, not necessarily. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Damn. Not necessarily when you were here. <laughs> well, occasionally you had me ask, is Spawn still going on? Yeah, <laughs> that's about it. Um, but I, I think Eric Larson is doing some work. They crossed over Savage Dragon, so those people have been picking it up. And a little bit of a 90s nostalgia in the recent years. So it, it, we were selling a couple, like five, six copies. I mean, a couple. Um, and the Spawn Batman crossover. I remember reading them when they came out. I don't remember a single thing about them, though. I just remember the battering in Spawn's face. Yeah, at the very end of the comic. Like yeah. that that's that one frame is like the main memory I have of it. Yeah. I remember thinking it was super neat at the time. Oh sure. Like yeah, I, yeah. I liked mm. the fact they were doing it at the time, but Well two two different books too. Like yeah. Frank Miller doing were, it. And, were they connected? Yeah. I don't know. Were they connected? Because there was the Batman spawn and then the spawn Batman. No, I think there were No, I think it was just story. a one was sort of published under DC. One yeah, was yeah, sort yeah, of published yeah, under yeah, Image. Yeah, yeah. So. All right. We got some more questions here, but we have something else we got to talk about. So we're going to go ahead and wrap up. Um, if you guys like this episode, um, thank you. Keep or listening. any of us. If you want to keep listening, uh, we're going to talk about Walking Dead finale here. So <clears throat> if you want to peace out, this is your chance. Uh, Toby, Bryce, you guys going to hang out? Ah, fuck it. Look, I mean, there's nothing to really spoil. I mean... 
There's a couple. Well, of, <laughs> there are two major kind of. deaths. It's just incredible that I've like gone the whole day without it getting spoiled. And then fucking Toby spoils it who hasn't even watched it yet. And, and I thought that I had been <laughs> spoiled, but then Toby spoils it, and I had been wrong the whole time. So fucking just, uh, fuck it. Well, we're going to talk about Walking Dead. There are deaths, but there's like not, there's not like other events that really happen in this episode. So you trust me, nothing will prepare you, Bryce. Nothing will prepare you for this episode. Even if you know what happens. Even if you know what happens. Uh, Toby's totally gone. He's watching the game. Uh, so for those who watched The Walking Dead premiere, no look. When the season ended last, uh, was it season six? Right? Six, yeah. A lot of shit from people online being like, I can't believe they would cop out like that and not show you what happened. I thought it was genius. So, oh, it was. It was, it was perfect. Yeah. Especially with the going to black and the yeah. little hints of... of dialogue that yeah. people were like oh you could hear this and was, uh, yeah. like people were going batshit of crazy. course they know how to stir up their fans yeah. now charlie you eventually did read 100 right yes you i did there. okay so this speaking uh, of which i need you to get the next slipcase hard yeah, cover. yeah so this uh this uh the premiere or the finale yeah. sorry last season introduced negan who's a big bad in the in, mm-hmm. the, in the the more recent five years or so over the walking dead comics and issue 100 when it came out was a big anniversary issue and it was also the uh, death of a major character uh, in the comics. Shortly uh, earlier to that, a a a a big character, but not a major character, was killed off. But it is someone in the show who played a much larger role. Mm. But going into this episode, and they had the equivalent scene, but with somebody else dying in the show. Right, mm. right. So in this, uh, going into this episode, uh, y- you have we don't we didn't know who was. Who was well, going to die? Okay, Someone so, died okay, at the end of the so, finale. So I, so at the, uh, so I, I, I was online, and I saw after I watched it, and I saw like some polls that people had done yeah. prior. Who they thought I was, gonna and say. the two people that they picked that were like neck and neck, yeah. were the two people that died. That died. Huh. I yeah. mean, so, I mean, part of it makes sense because, and but we'll, I mean, we'll, we'll talk about it. This goes here back in a to anybody who's read the comic books, kind of. Knows yeah well, timeline wise. Well, the thing is, is okay. Be so, dead and well, so be issue one hundred is is the big one. Right. Well, the other character died in issue ninety eight, right prior, and it was very kind of just, just out of the blue. It was just eh. yeah, like so, it wasn't anything major. Well, it was. So I guess here is the way that one of the great things about Walking Dead is not every character that's been around for a long time has a huge build-up to their death. It's yeah. just like, boom, the zombie came out of nowhere that you didn't know was yeah. there, and now that person's dead. And they've handled that very well in the show also. Like, it, it's not a big, you can really see that it's coming. It's literally, some of the character deaths have been the exact same way, where it's just, yeah. mm-hmm. suddenly somebody's dead. Well, like it, like they've talked about before numerous times is that, that there's things that Kirkman did in the comic that he felt yeah he didn't like. And oh well, he, we'll get to we'll get to yeah. something we'll get to that in a second. Um, but like I mean, Andrea is a perfect example. Yeah, she's still around in the comic. She's still a very important part in the comic book. Um, but they killed her off after what season three? Yeah, in I think at, so. Woodbury three, four. Yeah, yeah. So it was pretty like, early. Yeah. You know, yeah. The, but honestly, I I've always assumed that was. The actress sort of indicating she really didn't want to do it anymore. Could be. Could have been. Well, I just, I remember, really? I remember prior to them doing that, that she, some news was coming out and like various cast members were talking about how she was getting like death threats and stuff from the fans yeah. just because of how unhappy they Stupid. were with her arc and all that. And what the fuck? Yeah. <laughs> Dude, people are fucking crazy. I'm, yes, yes, they are. I, I, I'm wondering how much hate mail the guy who plays Negan's going to get oh, now. Well, so Negan, in his uh, role to be supreme badass murderer of all time, says, look, I have to take one of you guys out. You killed my men. So, surprisingly enough, about 15 minutes into the episode, we see who he kills. They didn't drag this out to the very end. We see who he kills mm-hmm. uh, at the end of the finale, and that is... Abraham. Abraham. Uh, he clocks him what? in the head a few times. So Abraham yeah. dies in the comics a few issues that prior. That's what Toby indicated. That's not what I thought. That's not... Uh, 
What? Well, Abraham dies in the comics a few years prior, completely out of the blue. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and the death in the comics was not substantial. It wasn't. It wasn't so, actually memorable. Wait, what a bummer. So do you remember... But that is the last person on my list I expected them to off. Do what? you remember the medical chick who got the, like, arrow through the eye? Um... Oh, he didn't watch last season. Oh, he didn't watch last season? No, I'm a season behind because I oh, only did the okay. free shit. Yeah. Never mind then. Well, so, free, like, Netflix and Hulu, which is They not had his either. death, but it, yeah, it, I forgot about that, but Charlie yeah. was right. It was another character died the way they kill him in the comics. So yeah. a lot of people are like, oh, he's safe, safe yeah. because that's his death. No, yeah. they kill him in the show. Wait, 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 wait. What, so have we covered what happens in issue 100? No, we're not there yet. We're not there yeah. yet. We so covered a part different of it. character? Two characters Two die characters in this die. episode. In this episode? Yeah. Yep. Oh, my God! Yeah. And that was very, very smart of them because people who read the comic kind of relaxed after they killed Well, so me Abraham. and Leanne both were like, oh, well, I love Abraham. He's a super cool character. Yeah. But it's not the guy from – it's not the character from the comic. Okay. Yeah. Where do they go from here? So the rest of the episode is ba- – well, the, a good chunk of the rest of the episode is basically Negan torturing the fuck yeah. out of – out of uh, not not physically torturing, but torturing the hell yeah. out he, of – He mentally breaks down Rick. Breaks Rick. Yeah. He, he, he grabs him, pulls him into a van – Throws him out into a field of zombies, throws a, a, a hatchet and says, go get me my axe. And and he, yeah, it's, he's... It, it, this episode is a mind. Dude, th- this yeah. sounds So you feel, awesome. you feel just... Yeah, I mean, Rick you're is this episode, being just, raked over the coals the entire episode mentally. Just feel awful. Oh, man. So, I feel excited. Well, only because I'm not Rick, but Jesus. I mean... This episode to me is worse than anything in Game of Thrones. It's worse than anything oh, yeah. in Sopranos. This has been yeah. worse than Game of Thrones. Yeah, I think uh-huh. so. It's a fucking ridiculously brutal. What about episode. when Ramsay Bolton like peels skin off people? Yeah, it's pretty terrible. But this episode. What about ke- when he has dogs so, eat babies? Yeah, I mean that's pretty terrible. But this episode keeps going. <laughs> for, for for the most part, this entire episode is kind of like this is really kind of hard to watch. Back to what we were talking about with um, Steve Dillon's art earlier. Like most of the time, I never get squeamish or oh, I put was. it down with like Steve. But this episode was he just kept beating. Well, the, hold, the on, ground hold on, with Re- Abraham. Remind me the order in which it goes because he kills Abraham. When does Daryl punch him? Is that before he takes Rick or after? That's before. That's before he takes Rick. Okay. But yeah, but so, in, but it's kind of like flashbacks. Yeah, right? Well, yeah. So, so, basically, yeah. Oh the the way they kind of start the episode is they don't show you who he just killed, right? And <laughs> but they drag it's these close ups they, they kind of on keep, Rick and Nikki's and, face, and they kind of set the tone, and then they keep kind of flashing back to what actually happened <laughs> as Rick and him are going yeah. out on this trip, and as Rick is processing what, what he just yeah. lived through. Yeah. So holy shit. So you kind of see that processing that's happening in Rick's head as it's going through. Is so, it so? Is is the Walking Dead? Is that is this ongoing or is this Games of Throning, Thronesing no, it's, on? Yeah, it's it? totally, totally ongoing. Okay. So uh, Daryl jumps up and uh, punches Negan in yeah, the face. Daryl's the one who can't just sit there and he he goes take, after take he goes it. after no, but, Negan and Negan who, basically but says, "Who is Negan threatening at that time?" N- nobody. nobody at he, that point. He already killed Abraham. He killed Abraham. Yeah, yeah. And Negan's uh, basically... He's talking and it. talking. <laughs> Take your headphone off at the wrong, wrong time. I commercials. It's silent. How did you... Ah, I was just walking out. I was like, oh, it's so good. I didn't know How did anything. you plan that so poorly? Uh, I don't know. It was, that was the, the worst uh, exit. Well, 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 any event. Well, well, no. Go. The well, worst. You want to go. No, he knows. He already knows. Toby already I knows. Know the other one. Yeah. Okay. So Negan, Any of it. So Negan's sitting there gloating and doing all this stuff, and Daryl punches him, and Daryl and Negan's like, "Well, you know, I warned you what, I would, warned happen you what would happen." If- and so it's a what, what's genius about the scene is he's standing next to Abraham's yeah girlfriend. What the hell's her name? I can't remember her name. Um, oh, the Latino girl. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's got to be Maria. And he's and he's <laughs> looking at dang racist white guy, and he's looking Wait, there. What? I thought her name was Maria. I don't know. I don't, I don't know. Let's, let's I don't keep going. Is it racist if you like the race? And um, he, he's standing right in front of her, and he sees that she's up, even more upset. And he's like, oh, were you two? Right? He, he's yeah. talking yeah. to her about this. And he's like, well, I have to do this. And I'm like, oh, fuck. He's going to kill the, her. But it's the quick turn on. Like, it almost sounded like he was going to let that go. Like, he almost. understood. Yeah. 
And then he's like, well, but I have to do this. Yeah. And, yeah. And then then we get literally the exact shots from the comic yeah. of him bludgeoning uh, Glenn. Glenn to death mm-hmm. with with Lucille, like, the baseball bat. Frame for frame. Yeah. Like, yeah. Eyeballs sticking like, out. like, th- and, and that scene, they're like, hold it. And then hold it for another couple seconds and hold it just a little bit longer. That was the most fucking graphic thing I have ever seen in my entire – his skull is caved in. A single eyeball is like bul- – I mean it's yeah. exactly like the comic. Yeah, bulging it's out. bulging out of his eye and he's like – and he's trying to talk and you can't re- – I mean you could kind of make up some of the words he's saying. And, it, and it's just like – this he said, still he said, shot, Maggie. I'll, I'll find you. Yeah, it's just this still shot on his face, just frozen, yeah. and you're like, "Oh my god, I can't fucking watch this." Yeah, this is the most goddamn brutal thing of all well, time. Well, the thing is, 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 is I then he, like then we he knew, beats, like we knew, we, and and the thing is, is they still they still got they us. still got us. Yeah. They they still yeah. went. It's incredible. Oh yeah, no, boom. They, because they did Abraham. Yeah, you the think way they did. You think you, it's you, out. you you. you Kind of go. So this is how they're changing it, yeah. and you relax. Yeah. yeah. Oh, wait, so wait, hold on, hold on, hold on. Pause. Do you guys all subscribe to some premium cable thing where you get AMC? Because it's not on basic it's not, cable. It's not premium it's on, for me. It's on my basic. I it's have not like, on my I, basic. I have, it's like yeah, I have it on mine. Yeah. This is I have fucking it. bullshit. I have premium cable. Yes, but I, I get everything. But, Why do I not have it? I have basic cable. Maybe no. it's premium, but you guys have premium or basic, and it's with you. No, I have fairly basic. I have the basic. Mine's a little bit better than basic now because I recently re-upped, but I already had AMC before I that. Fucking have, See, okay, so mine. I is, downloaded the app and I was ready to sign in with my like HOA bullshit login, and they were like, "No, this app is terrible." Oh, did you want to watch? Did you want to live stream? Well, this? we're not done. So <laughs> what? <laughs> now well, fuck, I'm ob- stepping out because it's in commercial mode again. Obviously, the well, no one else. Well, no one else dies. No one else. Dies. No one else dies. No one else. Well, but potentially the most absolute fucked up part of this episode is what Negan makes uh, Rick and Carl go through. Mm-hmm. Well, uh, I kind of want to cover something that happens before that. Yeah. Okay. Because before that, and this was one of the brilliant things they did, they literally filmed scenes of Negan oh, bashing in everyone. everybody's head. Yeah, everybody's yeah. head. Yeah, yeah. So and Rick's kind of having these flashbacks of like, yeah, everyone well, who could, getting who could killed. It, who could it have been? Who? But, well, know, what if they've already this? shown exactly what happened, but they've totally set up the fact that like Rick now accepts anybody else could be next, and his well, head as he's going through this trauma is experiencing what it would be like. If it, any of the other characters had their heads bashed and, in. And Negan also says, I will kill every single person here if you don't do exactly what I say. So yeah. he's kind of like living like these – he's having these flashbacks of all his adventures with these characters and then, then visualizing them all getting killed. Yeah. Huh. In these very fast yeah, it, clips. It's, like you it, don't, it's it not feels, yeah, It's It's Carl. It's Michonne. It's – Yeah, every character. It's every you, single, it's, Maggie, it's, every single character. You, you kind of feel that agony that Rick's going through realizing yeah. that he can't protect – Anyone from Negan. So, so when he gets oh. back, Negan basically turns to him and says, "Look, you're beat, but you're not down. You, you've he's still like, got a little he's fight." Like, you're in still you. looking at me. You're still looking at me, and, and that's not the look I'm looking for. Yeah. And so he oh. he says, "Get the axe, Carl. Come over here. Get down on the ground." He takes a, takes a marker, puts well, a mark on his well, arm. Hold on. Everybody at this point, everyone in their group. No. Hold on. I'm, everyone in their group at this point has guns to their guns heads. to their head, and he goes. Cut off your son's arm with an axe, or I execute every single person here. And he makes a point to tell every person who has a gun: make sure you shoot it through the nose, through like the so face, you get that yeah. nice splatter going. On. Yeah, and, it he, was and, like, and I mean, you just see. And I'm just sitting here like, I, I can't watch this. This is the most fucking brutal thing I've no, ever wait. seen in my entire not, life. It did not happen though. And, and so he's, I mean, Rick's just look and Rick just is falling apart and he's like yeah. why am I, I I can't do this and in the comics you remember Rick loses his hand in the comics he gets his hand cut yeah. off so well, I'm thinking like oh my god they're two yeah well right way early mm-hmm. and I'm like oh my god they're no, gonna, they're a, gonna it, it was at the prison that he lost his they're gonna kind of do it to Carl and so but 
Rich. As as a, no, fa- as, a as a father, no, as a father, not. it was it was, hard. it was at the at that Haven thing with the governor in the comics. No, yeah, the, yeah, but that was the prison. Nope. Well, they were in the prison, prison at the time, time, but Rick was at Haven yeah. because they got captured. Anyway, that, that uh, what was the Haven called again in the comics? Woodbury. Woodbury. Woodbury was where they were. That wasn't the prison in the comics. Yes. Yeah, the, the governor, governor was the governor trying was, to to get the prison. Was trying to get the prison from them. Mm-hmm. How did Stranger? What did he say? Oh, dude, that. <sighs> oh, governor's great. Uh, but oh, oh. The, so Rick is is about to do it, and Negan's like, "Hey, that's the look I was looking for. I finally broke into you. You're all mine. I'll see you next week." Yeah. Yep. Okay. Get me stuff, and then the episode ends, and it's just like two bloody heads just destroyed on the ground and everyone's just sitting there and just like silence mm. and just oh i'll leave you a truck so you can cart that stuff i need yeah 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 and that holy and that's just fuck. how the episode ends and it's just like holy fuck oof, it's the internet was fucking silent after the yeah, show like, like nobody there was nobody online talking like there was little things here and there but everybody was i mean the next day even at work, it was like, just like my coworkers. I, what do you say? She's like one of my coworkers. She's like, I wore black today. Yeah, I was like, I tweeted that the flag should be at half staff. Yeah, like it was, it oh, was man, pretty bad. Yeah, it's just it's half staff. I looked it up. It was a uh, something's half staff. Um, <laughs> it was among the most brutal things I've ever seen in my. T- I mean, it's easily the most brutal thing I've ever seen on television in my entire life. I mean, it may, I, I honestly, it's like more than Game of Thrones. I think it's worse than anything they've ever shown on Game of Thrones. Mm. Holy shit! Yeah, it's incredible. Um, Holy oh, that's shit! That's again. crazy. It's it's ridiculous. So uh, yeah, um, it's Game of Thrones. Or that's Game of Thrones premiere. That's how Walking Dead premiere. It's fucking brutal. Well, what's even what, what's even worse is I watched a little bit of the Talking Dead afterwards, and the actors and stuff have actually known about oh, this for over a year sure. yeah, 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 because they shot this Did Chris Hardwick looked like he was going to cry in that thing in that, in that commercial in between he was like yeah uh, we just watched it we're here at the cemetery because they had like some big gathering yeah, they like, had a, of well he had seen it he had, he had admitted to seeing it uh, the night Earlier. the day before and he was like yeah we're going to talk about this it's uh, and he like usually you're like yeah whatever whatever but he seemed a little. He seemed pretty kind of shaken up by it, actually. So yeah, I well, don't know. They it, showed audience oof. reactions to it from, people it, just, and people were like, Bleh. like screaming and crying, and like it was. I mean, I wasn't. It wasn't like crying, but I was just like, Oof, I can't watch this. But you can't turn away. Oh, it's so good though. It's fucking just. So and here's the thing. Negan is still in the comic books, all right? Mm-hmm. Oh, spoiler alert. I don't. I don't think they're gonna follow that. I. I think they kill him. I think. I think it is just so fucking visceral in the show. I don't think they can do with the character what happened. Kind of the journey he goes through in the comics. They basically arrest him in the comics at some point. I think they're gonna kill him because I. I don't think an audience. The t- I, it's so much more visceral when it's a TV show. I, well, exactly. The, the, I, I haven't read it or seen it, but I totally agree with that sentiment. This is this yeah. is the thing. It's going to really depend on how they do the all out war stuff. I don't, it's uh, really going to. I don't think they're going to quite get to that point. I think they kill him in the end of the season. I or, uh, or end of the season, or at least into next season. I I just uh, don't. I, I expect him to live through the season. Or or whatever, whatever the end of his arc is, he's not going to have. He's not going to be in the but show the, five but seasons. But that's the thing is, is, are you current on it? No. Because the stuff that Negan's doing now is pretty substantial. Oh, I understand, but I, I kind of get the feeling. Later, Bryce. Uh, Later. Bryce just doesn't take off a second early, but that's all right. We're about to wrap up. I don't think an audience is going to accept him surviving past a season or two of the show. I just don't think they will. Like the governor. I mean, they kill obviously the governor, but it's like they. I, I feel like you. Have, these are characters that you have to kill to 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 get your closure on the plot. And it's so much, so much darker as a TV show than a comic book that I, I, I don't think they're going to let them. I don't think they keep them around. I really don't. I don't see how they do it and, and, and have people be okay with it. Because I believe you ki- – when this happens, you're like, he's the worst character on earth and now he can die and now we get our closure. And I just don't think that's good. I don't, I don't but think I don't, do But the thing is, is they're going to drag it. They're going to drag it because, I mean, come on. They, Two they seasons, have, but you can't okay, go much This is the thing is, is they took Abraham's – Blah, death in yeah. the comic and turned it into something 
substantial yep. in the show. Yeah. I mean, him just kneeling there saying, suck my nuts, right? Yep. Like, like it's one of those things where Abraham has now, like, been elevated. Oh, yeah. You he, know, and, he's, and he's a great character. Like, he's a, he's a great character in the comic. I loved him in the comic. But again, I always it seems felt like he does he, more in the in the show than the he comic. does more in the yeah. show, and that's the thing is is I really respect how they 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 like you said they t- they took his death, applied it to somebody else to make you feel safe. Yeah, and yeah. then they because the thing is they've been foreshadowing Glenn for two seasons. Well, yeah. Yeah. honestly, that's the only reason why I was like I'm not sure they would do Glenn is because of what they did with him last season. The the fake out, yeah. Fake out. Yeah. yeah, because of the amount of outcry they got at the time, because of how big the sort of like oh, he didn't actually die and all that, yeah. and yeah, yeah, yeah. the videos that came out. Thank you for all your support. Blah blah blah. That's some fucked up shit to be like. <laughs> we're gonna bring him back for like. But, but the thing they were foreshadowing four or five it. episodes yeah. just to have just to him, kill him again. Yeah, but they were foreshadowing it so much. It you know before that like it's. And that's the thing is, I think they, I think they are well aware of most of the audience, or at least half of the audience, I would say, have read Walking Dead at this point. Like a lot of them know what's going on. A lot of far less than you think. A fraction, a percent, a percent. It's far, far less than what you think it is. Damn it, people! Tell your coworkers to read. I mean, I mean, either way, it is probably the most successful property to sort of comic conversion i know of yeah yeah sure. oh, it, oh like, definitely yeah, definitely. yeah. cross I mean, I mean, cross I mean, media adaptation this yeah. has been an amazing i mean walking dead is probably more profitable than most of the movies that have been made i'm not the entire marvel cinematic universe but but it is seven seasons and yeah tons of shit but i mean i just i kind of feel like there's a lot more synergy of people going and buying books and yeah i mean two percent as opposed to one all right but don't no, but i mean yeah more people read it but it's a very yeah small but number. i i guess what i'm saying is People know yes. because it's on the internet. People. Civil War did sell more copies of the Civil War trade probably in the shop and stuff because they made the Civil War movie. Oh, sure, sure, sure. All sure. that. And like Preacher TV <laughs> show, you probably sold some additional copies of the Preacher comic. Yeah, yeah. Nothing comes close to the amount of additional no. copies of Walking Dead that got sold because of right, the show. Right, right. Of course, of course. Now, the did, did any numbers come out? Uh, if they did, I didn't see them yet. Okay. No. Well, we're going to go ahead and wrap up. It's been a uh, long, uh, long episode, brutal episode of Walking Dead. So I uh, can't wait to see where the season goes. We're not going to cover it every week or anything like that, but uh, we'll definitely um, talk more as uh, we hit our bigger parts. Mm-hmm. Goodbye, Toby. See you later. Um, just wrapping up. Everyone's leaving. Oh, well. Let's thank our good friends here on Patreon. If you want, we got a uh, couple uh, more people. Um, I'm sorry, a couple more days left for your next Patreon. So ooh, it's going to be the First, for the next episode, stuff won't be processing, so you actually have a week. Um, sorry, I thought you said a few more days, but you got a week. If you want to be on Patreon, patreon.com slash comic conspiracy. We've got to thank our good friend Albert Soy. He's got an app plant everywhere on iTunes. Make sure you check that out. Julian Titus has a Nerds of Love Pants podcast. Toby. No pants. No pants. No pants. Pixelbit.com. That's where you go find that. Ryan Hess has the Preach Podcast at soundcloud.com slash preach podcast. Their last episode was on uh, the... Nintendo Switch. Switch. Of course. Joey Lawson is canon in the Triad Comics Anthology at triadcomicstudio.com. Thanks also to our friends Manoa Play, Sam Che, and uh, Talon Bray. Thank mm-hmm. you guys very, very much for all your donations and uh, to this lovely, lovely podcast. Uh, don't forget to go to comicspiracypodcast.com, geekbox.net, and iTunes to find this and all our previous episodes if you want to re-listen to them. Rate and review us. That always helps. Uh, the Comic Conspiracy, net or the contact form. You can send us an email, long form there. You can also hit us up on Twitter. I'll get to those names in a second here. Uh, digital.comicsconspiracy.biz. That's where you can go to buy your digital comic books. It helps us uh, support the store. Every time you buy something on there, we get a nice little cut. So do that. Conspiratorbrock.com. That's Brock's video and pull list. Check that out. Wanderers in the Fourth Dimension. That's Charlie's Doctor Who podcast. Who are you uh, covering the spinoff show? Have you seen it? Did I, they premiere I, the first episode? They premiered the first two. I have not watched it yet. Yeah, I'm kind of on the fence on whether or not I'm going to rush out and watch it or try and wait. Yeah, I haven't heard anything about them, so I don't know. If um, I or not. I, I've I've heard it's good. I've heard it's, it's darker sh- than people were expecting. It's just a short. This is a short thing, right? Like five episodes or six episodes or something, or is it a, like a long? Is it like a long term show? 
Well, it's supposed to be a long term show. It's oh, supposed okay. to be a, I thought it was a just new like a, spinoff. I thought it was just like a short special. Oh, okay. No, no, no. I mean, this is. They decided they needed like a Torchwood Doctor, or yeah. whatever. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And that's actually the interesting thing is it, from what I understand, it is definitely darker than Doctor Who. Yeah. But it's going not, for like a Buffy feel. So it's not quite. Not Torchwood. Torchwood level. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But, Torchwood is super dark. Yeah. Etsy.com slash shop slash Leanne Hill Art. That is my wife, Leanne. You can go pick up some stuff from her. Uh, we're all on Twitter. I'm Ryan Higgins Ryan. Brock is Brock Sager. Larson Bryce. That's Bryce Larson. Toby XI is Toby. Insanity in Chaos. That's Charlie in Comics Con Store. That's the comic store. So uh, add us all, please. Geekbox, Comedy Button, Good to Brain, All Talk Podcast, and Maga Maka Nations. Those are your other podcasts. Brock is either going to slap me or he's trying to count to five. What's no, happening? No, I'm, I'm saying I want to say something. Brock wants to say something. Brock, I got a plug. Why don't you take us out? So, box tops. Keep them coming, oh, people. Jesus Christ, box tops. Uh, a couple of you have already said you're sending them. They should be here tomorrow. Um, box I've top, had some baby. friends bring them in for my son Brody and his school. Um, thank you for the ones that have sent it, but keep collecting your box tops. Um, and you can send them to the store at 115A East Fremont Ave. Sunnyvale, California, 94087, addressed to Brody. Yeah. And like the box tops, we're going to... Cut out? Sure, that works. <laughs> <laughs>